Yes. You said you had some gripes you needed to work out on the podcast. Is that now? Uh, or is it coming up? That'll be when we talk about the movies. Okay. Because I have some gripes that I want to talk about as well. Oh, as always. Uh, this like, week. If it's got something to do with my brother, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, that, well, I always have an issue with your brother. But this right. is motorcycle related. Because earlier okay. this week, my motorcycle was stolen from in front of my house. Ooh. My wife left at. She left the house at like 6.50, came back around 9 o'clock, uh-huh. and within that time it just disappeared. Is this morning or evening? Uh, evening. Okay. Yeah. And, and you were at home? I was at home with the kids. I was almost outside working out. I almost was working out during this time, and I would have seen the guy. Off. Yeah. He probably wouldn't have tried, but had I seen him, probably would have ended badly for him. Or he could have saw... What you were working out with, they're like, oh yeah, I can take this guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But thankfully, I was too fat and lazy and didn't work <laughs> out. Um, he was teaching you a lesson. Yeah. And uh, so, motorcycle was gone. Called the police. Police came, filed a report. It was a big, long process. Zero expectation of getting it back. Well, two weeks earlier, I was uh, actually exercising. I was going out <laughs> for a run. It's a flashback. And. and I uh, ran into this guy who was laying on the side of the road. His face was all busted up, just pouring blood everywhere. And I was talking to him and saying, are you okay? Is this common where you are? Uh, It's common for it to happen, but not like super common for you to walk up on someone like that, you know? Got it. It was was an event for sure, but it wasn't like shocking. It's like, how could this ever happen? It was like, oh yeah, no, this adds up. This is something that would happen here. I just didn't expect to see it right now. Right. So I was like, let me take you to the clinic. You clearly need stitches and get you some medicine, clean you up and all that stuff. So I went and took him there, uh, dropped him off, him and his kid. And I was like, all right, you know, you can, he knew my friends, like he had their phone number. I was like, just call them. They can get a hold of me. I'll come pick you back up if you need it or whatever. Like, it's not really that big of a deal at the clinic. It's pretty common for people to go and get rides back from taxis and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wait around for four hours while you're getting stitches. Like, just call me. I'll come get you. Yeah. Never did. Never called me. I was waiting. Like, I looked around for him a little bit. Next couple of days, couldn't find him. Didn't know how he's doing. Uh, and then I just kind of forgot about him. I was like, all right, whatever. Like, I'm sure he's fine. It wasn't like he was dying or anything. He didn't need my help any more than that. And uh, so, that was two weeks ago. <clears throat> The day after my motorcycle got stolen, him and his son showed up at my gate talking to my wife. And my wife called me because I was inside. She's like, hey, can you can you come out here? Uh, sure. And I walked out and she's like, I think they know about your motorcycle. And I was like, really? So I went and asked them. I was like, oh, do you guys know where my motorcycle is? And they said, no, we want money. Can you give us money? And I was like, no. <laughs> I, I'm not going to give you money. Like, sorry. Um, like you give us money? <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, go, go, go talk to my friends. They might be able to help you out. I got to go pick my daughter from school because that was right at the time I needed to leave. And when I was leaving, my wife was like, I'm pretty sure they know where your motorcycle is. I was like, I don't know. They're just asking for money. Like I don't, I don't know. Like they didn't say anything to me about it. And uh, so that was the day after my motorcycle got stolen. This morning, I took Harper to school. It was like 7.30, my wife called, and she's like, good news, we found your motorcycle. I was like, all right, well, where is it? That guy who came by yesterday was trying to bribe us to get your motorcycle back. He had stolen it and hid it and was trying to ask for money. So oh, he, I was like, oh, wow, that guy's really lucky. Because this guy, I mean, his face is still so swollen from the beating yeah. he got the last time when I first took him to the hospital. I was like, there's no way... He would have beat me in a fight. It's like he's very lucky, and I'm so, lucky too, because I don't want to beat this guy up. But I would have been very, very unhappy had he walked me over to my motorcycle and then asked me for money to have it back. So here's a, a few questions. <clears throat> yes. Do you think when you found him, he was fresh off a beating of someone who the did exact chase same. him down? <laughs> <in> the <laughs> same. He just goes from one to another I until don't, he gets one. 
I don't think so, but I don't know. I imagine Second. I imagine that Go the ahead. guy who beat him the first time was probably yeah. someone he stole money from. Yeah. Like he probably had that beating coming. But Oh I'm, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Now second question, did mm. he know that he was stealing your motorcycle or was it completely coincidence that he was also the same guy that you helped? Uh that's debatable. I don't know exactly. I think he knew it was mine, but I don't know. Because how, how I mean, how would he know? You didn't know this man, right? Not how would personally, he kn- no, yeah. Well, are you like, do you stand out enough to be like, oh, yeah. the, the white guy in town? Uh, not in town, but in the neighborhood, yeah. They would know, okay. pretty much everyone would know where. There's um, me and two other houses that have foreigners in it. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm very certain that the whole community is aware of who we are. I gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, he so I went, I went to where my motorcycle was because they found it, and the guy had dug a screwdriver into the ignition, destroying the ignition. Jeez. And so I had a, well, I was going to walk it back, but the police officer told me to sit on it. He put his foot on the back of it and pushed me while he was riding a motorcycle, which is a pretty <laughs> common thing here, but it's very scary. Um, but yeah, so I, I have my motorcycle back. No video of this. No. I have my motorcycle oh. back. The ignition is destroyed, but that can be fixed, and uh, the police are looking for the guy. So we'll see what happens. So, so uh, this is after the podcast. I went out to get my motorcycle fixed, get the in- ignition where the key goes in, get that fixed because it's just destroyed right now. And I was in my truck, and I was driving by, and I saw the guys who did it. It was a father and son, and they are just sitting there chopping coconuts. Turns out the coconuts... They had stolen from a different friend of mine, and it it's just a big mess. And so I, I got out, and I was asking him, like, hey, what's going on? What You stole my motorbike. What are you guys doing? Like, what's happening? And they just acted like nothing was wrong. They were just like, oh, you know, hi, how's it going? How are you? And I was so confused by their attitude that I was like, I, got, I need some help. Because the only evidence I had was people telling me that they did it. I didn't have any proof. I didn't have – there's nothing. So I called my friends. I was like, hey, can you guys help me figure out what's going on? And the dad got up at this point and walked around the corner like he was going to go to the bathroom and just disappeared. I I saw him get up, but I was more focused on the son because I was like, well, he's going to be a lot harder to catch than the dad who is all still beat up. His face is all swollen. And, and this is from two weeks ago or something. And he just, just seemed really slow. And uh, so I wasn't worried about losing him. But when I went to find him, he was gone. So we kept the son with us. We're like, hey, where's your dad? Where'd he go? You need to help us. He took us all over. Just, he was saying, oh, maybe over here. Maybe over here. Maybe over here. Having us walk through just muddy roads. And my pants were just covered in mud. And it, was a, it took us three hours until we finally found him. And uh, the guy, I, I told him, I was like, you know, it's, you think you're, you know, basically I told him, you think you're so brave for stealing a motorbike, and yet you run off and hide as soon as we find you. That's kind of pathetic. It's like, I didn't run. I walked. <laughs> and I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe just their attitude. But they just, they didn't care. It was just, I don't know, it was amazing. But the police showed up, arrested him, and hopefully that's it. Hopefully the whole motorbike thing is, is done. So this will get back to the podcast now. Did he just take it and walk it to his location? Then? I think I so. Assume? Yeah, I mean, it was only and like... How far is it from your house? Like 300 yards, maybe. Oh, okay. It wasn't very far, but I was like... I, I don't know, I posted a picture of where it was on Facebook. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I saw a picture of the bike, yeah. Yeah, so it was like tucked in this beat-up shack that was all covered with weeds and stuff, so it's kind of hard to see. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> I was... It was an interesting it right couple days. Goes. I know. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, now, that, that was pretty annoying. How, now, now I don't know about motorcycles out there and, mm. and bribery, but about how much do you think he would be asking I heard for the motorcycle? F- Five thousand baht, which is about one hundred and sixty dollars. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, I don't really know bad. what <laughs> what his real plan was, but it didn't seem very well thought out. Now, is so? Do you think he lives in this area? Have, yeah, he he lives around here, but I mean, he's also not necessarily homeless, but somewhat homeless, I guess. I don't know. He's a vagrant. So it wouldn't be hard for him to pick up and go somewhere else. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it was pretty annoying though. I wasn't so very something about it. Believe it or not, yes. something worse happened to me this week. Ooh. You stubbed That's, your toe? I had to watch Tokyo Drift. <laughs> well, before we get into that, Ugh. I wanted to read some oh. of your YouTube comments. Okay, let's see what you got. Um, I'm pulling them up right now. Can you do something that's distracting so it's not as obvious that I'm... <laughs> I, I was kind of hoping for something less obnoxious, though. Oh, you need to specify. Sorry. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get someone, <laughs> like, I, I just had this happen the other day. Someone will, like, text me or hit me up, like, hey, are you still doing the podcast? I'm like, hey, I guess you're not listening anymore. <laughs> I feel like your response That's okay, because be... they, they still donate the money, so. <laughs> They're like, because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still getting charged from uh, Patreon, so I just want to make sure you guys are still going. <laughs> Um, why is my computer going so slow? Oh, probably because I'm streaming. I was like, but in all reality, you shouldn't listen. We have no right to be doing what we're doing. Wow. It's You're, garbage. You are so good at getting convincing people that we, we do a good job. Uh, yeah. Look, if people are listening, they're going to listen through that. They're not going to be like, oh, he's right. He, he pretty much said we shouldn't listen and then stop listening. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it. Um, all right. Here we go. So these are some of the comments left on some of the trailer reaction videos or trailer breakdown. Or Okay. I don't really know what to call them. It's not a trailer reaction, um, but I've been doing almost daily videos about movies that are coming trailer out. Trailer hype videos! <laughs> coming out for that week where I kind of break down Help. the movie and some of the stuff about it and then share my thoughts on if I'm going to see it, if I'm not going to see it. Um, it's all over on YouTube if you want to check it out. I would say that's a trailer reaction. Yeah, sort of. But I mean, trailer generally, review. YouTube reactions are you like see the person watching it and pretending to laugh or cry. And that's Ugh. Like, I'm, Ugh. I'm better than that. I hate that because it's so like yeah. Look, I know you've seen this ten times already, and you wrote out a script. Yeah, no, they're really bad. Um, but anyways, <laughs> go ahead. One of the videos I posted a couple weeks ago was on Crazy Rich Asians. And yes, this is actually you got a lot of flack for that one. I still am. People still okay. People are annoyed that I wasn't excited about this movie, and honestly, it feels a little racist. Because I feel like people think that just because the whole cast is Asian, that I should like it more, that I should be more excited about it. The same with Black Panther. It's like, yeah. just because the whole cast was black, that doesn't mean I need to be excited for it. Like, oh, cool, that that's happening, but I, I still would rather see a good movie. Like, it, as long as the movie's good, I don't care who the cast is. The cast is secondary to all that. Exactly. And so people seem frustrated that I'm not like super excited about it but again only based on the trailer it seems like a pretty boring movie where it's you know the girl doesn't know that her boyfriend's rich he takes her back to China I believe finds out that they're crazy rich and does she know that he's Asian yes that part okay. is is very clear on everyone's. that part's clear from the beginning got yeah. it um she so she goes to China, finds out they're super rich, and then they she's like trying to adapt to it because she's not rich, and like trying to get used to it, and like it's a fish out of water. the The story element or the story arc has been done so many times. Like it's not like yeah. something new or fresh. It was just like I don't know. This doesn't look that good. Even my wife went into it, and she's like, "Oh, let's watch this one first because I heard the book is great, and I, I've been curious to see the movie." watched the trailer and was like eh I don't need to see the movie <laughs> and so people have been 
annoyed that we weren't excited about it. But yeah. uh, Quinn Walter said, watch the movie. If you lived in Asia, not sure which part, I live in Thailand, uh, then there are parts you may recognize. However, living in an area or country and a oh, probably as a foreigner doesn't necessarily show one what it feels like to live in a family that comes from that place. The expectations and pressure are 100% different versus living in a non-Asian as a non-Asian individual. However, the movie, he didn't put that, was fantastic and actually a good story. So that's in response to when I told the guy who told me to educate myself that I'd lived there. Educate yourself. And I was like, well, okay, what? how much education do I need? Like, I'm not saying that I'm living in Asia for eight years makes me Asian. No, but that guy say is get a master's. <laughs> You talk about this movie. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know how much, I don't know how much information I need to enjoy Crazy Rich Asians, but. Uh, I don't <laughs> know if it's information based. I don't know. But uh, I don't, I'm, hopefully we find, you educate yourself enough to find whatever that is. I'm considering watching the movie to see sure if I'll it's it. actually as good as everyone's acting like it is. Because I, I really. Oh, it. Definitely won't be. Yeah, I really. When can't was the imagine. last time you saw a movie that was as good as everyone made it sound? Um, it's either overhyped or underhyped. Yeah, there's never like perfect hype. <laughs> um, yeah, Optimal I can't really hypeness. think of one. Maybe Tokyo Drift. Uh, oh no <laughs> no 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 no! So another movie that's coming out this week is The Nun, which is a horror movie uh, in the Conjuring universe. I don't know if you're supposed to call it a universe, but do you know The Conjuring? The, the Conjuring Cinematic Universe? Got it. Well, there's like five movies from them now. Oh, I, I've never watched any of those movies. There's uh, The Conjuring 1 and 2, and then Annabelle, right. which is a spinoff of The Conjuring. And, and then Napoleon Dynamite also is in that same universe, right? I think so. Okay. And now The Nun is coming out. Um, but Chinchilla's Corner says this will probably bomb too soon to say I know but I can't help but feel like this movie is probably gonna, not going to be good I will agree that the setting of the church a safe, hav- a safe haven which ironically Danger Can Dwell is pretty good to take place in which is something mm-hmm. I had said in my, my thoughts about it I was like yeah. it's cool that it's in church but that's kind of the only thing that I find spooky about it like the church is actually just the church itself without the demonic parts is probably yes. scarier than the movie itself. You know, just the... There is something about churches at night that terrify me. Yeah, well, especially the old, like, Catholic ones, the ones that have been around for a few hundred years. Well, and that's the thing. It, well, to me, it's not even just that, but I get really creeped out by stained glass. I don't know why. It just is... There's something about it. Yeah, yeah. And That's like normal. ominous organ music. <laughs> I no joke for a long time. I had nightmares about being like in an abandoned like church, but it was like this huge church, not like an old Catholic church or a cathedral, like a, just a regular just church. A modern church where it was like dark, and there were different rooms, and there's like someone playing like a haunting organ. Yeah. It, I don't know. I I remember I had that dream. What felt like every night for a long time when I was a kid. It's still something that I think about. I'm like, oh, it gives you the the shutters. <laughs> the shutters. If that's a thing. You know the shit where like ooh, like you put on your spooky. window the shivers. I don't think I've ever heard anyone call it the shutters. Well, it's new. <laughs> Specific for churches. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hate when I get the shutters in church. So. Were you trying to say Anyways. shivers? You were trying to say shivers, right? No, I was thinking like I, I it makes me shudder. Yeah. And I just said it gives me the shudders. Okay. It doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> just, um, just move on. Another comment on the nun review is from it be furwire? F E R W H Y E R? I don't know how to say that. Fur furwire. Fur furwire. <laughs> Uh, it seems like it could turn a steady profit, but to me, I feel like it will be a mediocre film. Nuns are, parentheses, at least in my opinion, traditionally scary. The women who've decided to give up modern life 
to marry, in quotations, Jesus and give their life to serving him. So if done right, it could be pretty scary. I'll watch a YMS quickie on Wait, that's what's scary about nuts? Well, that they're different from society. That they've actively chosen to go a different life. They make it sound like like it's uh it's like scary because like at any time i might have to become a nun and like i don't want that lifestyle and that scares me that is scary but i don't think that's what they're saying uh i would say just the the clothing is well, yeah, a little scary for me traditional clothing is almost always can be creepy like any any traditional clothing just because it's so uh, old yeah like um yeah, I got nothing for that. Keep going. Well, like you could you could have a movie about killer pilgrims and it would be creepy in itself. That's true. Do you know what I'm saying? Like any traditional yeah. like old old-timey style, you turn them into some type of murderer and you already have like this additional element of creepiness just based on their their clothing, you know? Because it comes off <laughs> as cultish. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And ritualistic. Um, but anyways. Another yeah. comment on Crazy Rich Asians was from okay. Agi Vela. Vela? This wasn't even a reaction. You guys had no emotion slash reaction. Also, <laughs> you came in with a negative attitude. Thumbs down. Oh. Thumbs down, Thumbs sir. Down. Um, my response was, Self. this was the first video Sam and I had done together on this, and we were very uh, awkward. We were like, well, we don't really know what we're doing. This is kind of weird. Uh, so th if that's the negative uh, aspect of it, sorry. We weren't coming into it with negative emotions. You are just a naturally negative sounding person. That's not that far from the truth. Which I, I've always known to be true. <laughs> um, so well, I don't know. I don't care. Like, I'm not going to pretend to be excited or get angry when I'm watching a trailer. If it doesn't evoke a response then that is my reaction it's like, yeah okay and that's again that's why we stopped doing that because it's boring and we're not going to fake it so we stopped doing that reaction style and they're now trying to do a little more in-depth type stuff so real <laughs> quick did does the nun i had no i haven't seen the trailer for but does it actually look scary not really because and 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 maybe you can correct me. I, I feel like not long ago I read an article about the trailer for the nun, mm -hmm. and they had shown it to like some test audiences or something. And there was like a scene that was so scary that like they say it that was for like every it was movie. upsetting. Like uh, I'm trying to remember. Like it was like giving people like mild heart attacks or something ridiculous yeah. and they had to cut that out of the actual like trailer trailer no i mean they say that that that's what every horror movie that comes out there like the audience in our initial showing was so scared people were fainting and wetting their pants and throwing up and throwing and up killing and, each other yeah and it's just like okay no, none of that's true like, there's some people who get legitimately they scared at these movies. They didn't tell you that the audience was a bunch of five-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it looks it looks well-made, I'll give it that. Like, it doesn't look like there's like it's cheesy or that they're not yeah. earnest about it, but it's just, for me, horror movies are kind of boring. Like, there's not really any good ones. The ones I enjoy are the ones that are so over the top, something like Saw or uh, yeah. The Purge. But those like don't okay. even feel like horror films, you know. Nah. Um, another movie coming out this week is Peppermint. Have you heard of Peppermint? Peppermint. Uh, refresh me. Ah, refresh Peppermint. Got Pe it. Peppermint's with Jennifer Jennifer Gardner, and her family gets murdered by the mafia, the cartel. Yeah, I haven't seen the trailer before, but I've heard about it. She 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 turns into the Punisher. She goes right. off for five years and trains and comes back and murders them all. But on based on the trailer, I'm like super excited for this movie. It looks really good. Um, okay, I, I, that sounded sarcastic, so I'm not sure. No, serious. I'm but like I am super excited for this movie. <laughs> no, I, I really think this is gonna be a good one. The, really? Her just from the trailer again. You know, I, I mean, it's hard to. Like I said in one of the comments responses, 
I was really excited for the Foreigner with uh, yeah, I, I was too with Jackie, Jackie Chan. Chan. The trailer got me like like really so great. hyped up. I was like, this yeah. is gonna be great. Like the emotion looks really good. The revenge looks re- uh, uh, deserved. Like earned. the fights and everything. And, and then I saw the movie. I was like, oh, this is this is not at all what the trailer was like. Um, so there's high potential that this movie is gonna be garbage, but based on the trailer, her emotional depth of struggling, losing her family, and you know suffering through that, then the logical step of her going away for five years and to train with I assume the ninjas in Batman Begins and prepare and then come now, back. What was, what's that like? The Order or what's their name? The the, uh... the foot, the hand. I think that's oh, Marvel. Marvel's a hand. The foot is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, the League of Assassins? Is that right? League of Shadows? League of Shadows? I feel like that's right, but also wrong. I feel like it's a League of Assassins. I definitely don't think that's great. No? I don't remember. Anyways, he trains with them. The League of uh, Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Um, but no, so I, I thought this looks really good. To me, okay, personally. I'll have to check that one out. Um, Millennium Mouse said it's just peppermint because I, I said the peppermint, which was dumb on my part. Um, <laughs> dumb, dumb. Also, it feels looks like the Punisher if the gender was swapped. And to further your speculation of the husband, hu- the father husband being a cop, that has to be the reason that, or maybe he might have had ties in tie ins with cartel or something. The cartel doesn't just take lives for no reason, doesn't correspond with them. They need a reason to take lives. Anyhow, as for the movie, I'm not exactly on board with it. It just screams another Hollywood schlock. But who knows? Maybe I'm in the mood for it. I'll probably check it out. So signed, Pablo Escobar. <laughs> I uh, while while I don't disagree with him, I think yeah. his opinion on it makes complete sense. I just landed on the other side of the coin. Like I'm yeah. like in the middle. I'm like, oh, this could be really good or this could be really bad. I just think. I'm I'm excited that it could be really good, you know what I mean? It's like the the glass half full, gla- half Potential. empty type yeah. of thing, and not that I'm a uh, optimist because that's not true at all. Uh, I just am like I see the potential of it being really good, and generally, I'm more disappointed with movies I see a lot of potential in because they're more disappointing to me. Yeah, and then I have one more. So. When does that one, that one comes out soon? Or is it out already? No, it's not out yet. This Friday. Got it. Um, on our last uh, reading comments video, the one that came out last week, mm-hmm. uh, it'd be fewer, fewer wire. I don't know. If you're watching this, how do you pronounce it's your it's name? Furwire. 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 Because he, he's got capital letters so fear wire is one word for fur wire sorry about your <laughs> this, name and i'm just like i would love to do a podcast virtual. of 30 minutes of you just trying to say fear wire <laughs> just i i told you that i used to work for a um telemarketing company right yeah I, for a little bit right yeah two weeks and it was the worst <laughs> i'm i'm terrible <laughs> at names and i'm fairly certain i have uh dyslexia to an extent and so, like, like I see these it's names, sexy, and my, yeah. yes. my brain just shuts down. But it'd be Furion <laughs> said he'd loved my glasses that I wore last week, and that was because my allergies were so bad, my eyes looked red, and I looked like I was dying. So I was like, ah, I need to cover these up somewhat because I also, look like he's on I, had, I had so much pink eye going on. Oh, Sabrina, geez. Sabrina wanted to know if it was clickbait because I put her title in the. Uh, on the thumbnail, which do you think that's clickbait? Is that clickbaity? Let's explain. So last week, she left a comment on a different video. I cut that uh-huh. out and I put that in the thumbnail of the YouTube video about reading the comments. The comment in the was the the thumbnail was in the thumbnail. Is that what? You, yeah. Right. No, that's not click clickbait's like where. You, it's all right. It was just a joke on her part. Oh, 
fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Should have explained that. I need that. jokes explaining it. You know this. <laughs> she was. She wanted to bring up another point on uh, beautifully broken. She wanted to note the American family might be dealing with an unwanted pregnancy. They keep showing the girl with her boyfriend? Question mark. Otherwise, you picked up my issue pretty well, minimizing bigger issues and making white Christians the saviors. Could probably do a serious analysis analysis on racial themes. I think there is a, a lot of depth to that point in these Christian movies where you take poor foreigners and you take their issues to make the rich white people's issues seem uh, to solve them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like you see it a lot here, right? People will come out for visit and they'll see people living in the slums and stuff like that. And instead of being, you know, pushed to help, they think, wow, I shouldn't complain because my life is so good. And that's the wrong attitude to take from it. You know, you don't look yeah. at, you don't look at someone who's suffering to make yourself feel better. You see someone suffering, you, you try to help them and then they steal your yeah. motorcycle. <laughs> um, it all comes full circle. <laughs> Millennium Mouse said, I love religious propaganda films. They are so inept, absurd, con convoluted, and contrived in the worst possible way. Saving Christmas is top tier in terms of bad religious propaganda oh, films. Oh, yeah. Also, the bigoted caveman I mentioned that Nick Kroll played was from a TV show from 2006 that aired on NBC or ABC called Caveman. It was a show that was based off those old Geico commercials. I remember when that came out. Did Wait, was that Nick Kroll? I guess. I, I didn't look into really? it. Really? I watched that. Me. Did you? Well, like the first episode. I don't know if it made it past the first episode. Yeah, I don't think there was a lot. There was like no... Everyone was just like, this was funny for 30 seconds, but not 30 minutes. That's way I, too much. It, by the time the show came on, they'd mm -hmm. already overused the character in the commercials. Yeah. The commercials I thought there, was, at that point. there was no way this is going to work. Yeah. And then I watched the first episode, and it was stupid. That is true. It was just a 20-minute long commercial for Geico. Um, but that's all the comments that we got this week. So if there's any... We'll read the next ones next week, potentially. I dig it. Might have to skip next week because my mom's coming to town. Boo. So I don't know if I'll be able to record or not. But, uh, so you're doing the podcast with her instead. Got it. Yep. Um, this weekend that is coming out... Where are we? Blade Runner. The first Blade Runner. You remember doing that? Oh, yes, I do. <sighs> Super it seemed like that long ago. Yeah. Uh, I did, was not a fan. Spoiler alert. No, it wasn't good at all. Um, but if you're watching on Twitch, we will be right back, uh, and we're going to start talking about Tokyo Drift. Blech. <laughs> um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can... Uh, wait a few weeks. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say now. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and we'll be right back. <laughs>